What's up YouTube, back with another reaction video. Today we are looking at the Duke of Westminster. Who's that I hear you say? Well, there are some families, land owning, property owning families here in the UK who have ridiculous amounts of wealth. Far beyond the likes of Donald Trump, your Grant Cardones, all of these people who you see mainstream in the media all day, every day, yeah, they got money, but then there's a next level of wealth. And you don't hear anything about these people, but me as a property man, I am fascinated by these types of people who own obscene amounts of land and property and wealth across the world, and you never hear a peep out of them. So today we're looking at the Duke of Westminster. So just a little bit of background. So the Duke of Westminster is actually a title. It passes generationally from father to son, father to son. And this is a title that was created by the Queen in uh, the 1800s uh, for British aristocracy. This is Illuminati stuff, just kidding guys. But this, these are prominent wealthy, wealthy. I mean, the word wealthy doesn't do it full justice as a word, but these are very prominent wealthy families who have these titles bestowed on them from the royal family. And they're what we call aristocracy. And the current Duke of Westminster, he inherited the title from his father in 2016 at the age of 25 and he became the world's richest person under 30. And I bet you never saw it in the papers or in the news at all. They say his current wealth is round about 10 billion pounds. And I just am really interested in looking into the history and the background of these people and seeing how they accumulated their wealth and what lessons I can take from them. And hopefully you can get some lessons out of this too. I found a really interesting video from a random guy on YouTube talking about how they preserve their wealth in their family. So let's Let's take a look by the way guys if you like this video drop it a like subscribe follow me on instagram i'm at the wealth warren let's get into this video hi this is charles kelly i'm in london today in sloan square on friday the 15th of october and behind me you can see uh, the royal court theater sloan square station there the colbert restaurant and if you walk up that street over there that would lead you up to to Knightsbridge and Harrods and this is actually Sloan Square itself and then over there is King's Road that's that's fashion so just in case you're watching from overseas or outside of London and you don't know about these areas, these are the most, some of the most expensive areas of London and the whole of the UK. I mean, prime, prime, prime central London locations. I don't even want to think what the cost per square footage of property is in these areas of the UK, but just know they're very, very, very expensive. Fashionable Chelsea. So yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful area, very, very expensive. There you go. And really over you know behind me over there and that that area is, is commonly known as Belgravia and if you buy a property there let's say you buy a flat there you could pay anything from <laughs> a, a million pounds for a short lease up to 15 million pounds just for a flat just for a flat damn one of the buildings in say Eaton Square uh, the freeholds are, are generally not available because all of the freeholds all of the land so all of the land all the, all the property around here, all the land, is mostly owned by one family, and that's the right. And I think that's where he's going. So, when it comes to buying flats in the UK and other places, but particularly in the UK, usually a lot of them are on what we call leasehold. So, if you buy one flat in a block of um, of, of other flats in a particular area, you're often buying the leasehold. So what does that mean? It means you own the unit in that building, but you do not own the land that it's built on. Now this concept is derived from feudalism that really ran uh, from the 9th to the 15th century in, in medieval Europe, and also obviously here in the UK since we're in Europe, whereby basically the king owned all of the land, right? He owned all of the land throughout the whole of, um, of the UK. And what he would do is that he would apportion land to aristocrats, to barons, to bishops, and then they would have other people on the land like knights and peasants who would work the land for them. So it's just this hierarchy of ownership whereby only one person owns all of the land really and truly, and he's just really renting it out for other people to use for long periods of time. But in return for that, he gets what you call a ground rent. So if you bought a flat and it's on a leasehold, take a look at your lease agreement, just out of interest, and have a look at who the freeholder is. That's the person who owns the land that it's built on. You might see, you know, pension funds, insurance funds or you know specific landowning companies 
But when we're talking about central London in the prime areas of the UK, these are old school British aristocracy who've owned that land for hundreds of years and it's just passed down in the generations. And of course, it has gone up, up, up in value. That's why they're billionaires today. The Duke of Westminster, uh, their reported wealth is over 10 billion, but I don't think anybody could really estimate what their, their wealth is worth. Good timing. Yeah, and and the family had this property, in, you know, held by the family for, for hundreds of years, mm. and that's how they've preserved their wealth because they will only sell off properties on a leasehold. So they will grant you a lease for 50 years, 100 years, maybe longer. But they know that eventually that that freehold is coming back to them and and the family. And this is how they've preserved family wealth for for hundreds of years and why, why they're worth billions and billions of, of pounds today and, and I would imagine that that doesn't even start with, with what they're really worth mm -hmm. because you know they've got offshore businesses as well they've got other property companies mm -hmm. it's not just based on I mean guys you know if there ever was a template for preserving wealth in your family for hundreds and hundreds of years it's been done it's right in front of you I mean hold an asset for generations right and as he said they'll lease it for 50 years 100 years happily because you know they're not going to be around um at the end of that lease their life will, their natural life will be over but their children are going to be alive their great grandchildren are going to be alive and that property is coming straight back to them and that land stays in the family right so um it is a great template for preserving wealth over hundreds of years ownership 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 of assets it's really simple guys the one family business but this is uh, why if you if you buy a leasehold you know eventually that property is going to go back to to the freeholder unless you carry on extending the lease and then if you extend the lease they the, the freeholder gets another wadge of money from you to extend the lease so it's a great model uh, and that, that Sloan Street, now that would lead right up to, to Harrods, uh, Harvey Nichols and, and Knightsbridge. And then down there, as I said, you've got King's Road. So this is, it's, it's a fascinating story because uh, when, when the, the last Duke of Westminster died, uh, I think he's called the Earl of Grosvenor or something like that, and he died fairly young. And his son, uh, the, the, the latest Duke, became one of the richest young men and the most eligible bachelor in, in, in the UK. I think he was less than 30 years old. Try the world, mate. So he's inherited this enormous fortune. Now, the family have a good tradition of preserving wealth. They don't go out and start blowing all the money. Uh, they, they, they look after the money for the, the future generation. And, you know, that is a great point as well. When it comes to my, my principle, as I said at the beginning of this video um, and other videos, is preserving wealth for my future generations. My grandchildren and great-grandchildren who I might not see in my lifetime, but I want them to look back and know that their great-grandfather made the steps to secure wealth for them and they're benefiting from my hard work now. And I hope you guys are the same. We want to leave inheritance, big chunky inheritances for our future generations and hope that they don't blow it all. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure they uh, don't um, deprive themselves of anything, but you, you generally wouldn't see them out you know, splashing money around and uh, in the gossip newspapers and that sort of thing. They, they lead quite a low-key lifestyle, as many of these what you might call old money families do. They, they plan years ahead in terms of inheritance tax and estate duties, trusts, in order to, to, to preserve their wealth from, from the tax man as well as you know, just losing the money by selling off the properties and then paying a load of tax and, and then... Okay, I think I'm back online now. I lost the connection there. Yeah, this is how they preserve their, their wealth for, for years and years and years, whereas other uh, families that have had stately homes and, and, and wealth from, you know, a few hundred years ago, uh, the, the second and third generation have lost that money because they, they didn't continue uh, to, to pr produce anything and the money that they had is gone because of taxes and death duties and that sort of thing. I mean, I absolutely love this. You know, you, he's talking about the grandfather from a previous generation who put mechanisms and, and things in place to ensure that that, that, that wealth doesn't leak 
um, out of the family and he's actually putting in guardrails to prevent um, future generations, you know, his, his offspring further down the line from blowing all the money. As you said right there, you know, they're never going to sell the land ever. You know, the properties might change hands. So, you know, Harrods might move out one day down the line and another big re retailer might move into that store. But the owner is going to remain the same probably for the next 500 years. And that is how you preserve wealth over generations. You keep the assets, you don't sell them off. Well, maybe you sell some off, but you don't sell them all off. You you preserve and you hold on to the majority of them. Why? Because over the long term, the value goes up and they're getting a regular income stream, or well, they have done over the past 500 years, imagine that, um, from ground rent. But the, the Duke of Westminster, and to be fair, in, over in Chelsea, you know, the Earls of Cadogan and, and different Earls have, have managed to to keep wealth in, in place. Um, uh, the other one is the De Walden Estate over in Marble Arch. Uh, they, they, by, by clever planning and tax planning, they've managed to preserve their wealth. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, but if you are buying a property and, and you're buying a leasehold, then you know, you've only got that property for the, the term of the lease unless you extend it. Now, the government has reformed leaseholds in the past and they're planning to do so again. So yeah, I'm gonna stop it there. Uh, really, really interesting video. I mean, it's only got 183 views. So guys, go watch this video and get those views up. But this is uh, Wealth Preservation, Wealth Creation 101. Uh, a lot of people don't understand this. So most people, you know, who, let's be honest, will buy a property, um, say it's a freehold, for example, you buy it, um, say you get it on the cheap for say 200 grand and over 20 years it goes up to 800,000 pounds. 99 people out of 100 are going to sell that property. They're going to cash in. And you know, I don't blame them. We're only human after all. However, the ultra wealthy, those people who set things up so that their great, great, great grandchildren offspring for the next 500 years do not have to work, do not have to worry about that. They put stuff in place to ensure that that wealth gets passed down and goes up over time. And you know, a key component of that is not selling their assets, preserving it, leasing them out to other people to use. But the asset remains within the ownership of the family. I love stuff like this. As you can tell, I could go on and on about this. I could make a video twice as left, but I'm gonna stop here. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think that this is a great strategy for preserving wealth? How can people like us do the same um, in today's age. Uh, see you guys soon. Like, subscribe, share this video.